All right, and we're back here at Agcor Technologies with Taras. Taras, we have some spirulina growing here in the greenhouse. And uh, what else eats spirulina besides fish? Brent shrimp, right? So wh what are we doing here? What is this project? Well, right here what you see is uh, the next uh, wave of expansion here at Agcor where we, uh, we're kind of moving our way up the tropic level. We started off with cyanobacteria and now we're moving on to the things that eat them. Okay. So these little critters right here are brine shrimp, or Artemia salina. This is a species which basically most larval fish have to consume and that can also be used for a lot of different adult um, species. So what we're trying to do is pack them full of our delicious spirulina nutrition and uh, use that as a nice live uh, vehicle to the fish. Okay, so most people in the aquarium hobby, people watching this video, are used to hatching brine shrimp in a two liter container, right? But you guys have uh, some larger containers here. So you're hatching brine shrimp right now, um, transferring that from a sieve into a larger container and then you're taking those baby brine shrimp and then you're growing them out in these tubes to full size so that they can continuously reproduce in an environment where they have a live food source, right? You're exactly right. So many of the issues that people have if you uh, are culturing your brine shrimp in your standard one liter soda bottle is after a few days you're gonna have a chummy mess. And that's because the, a, a successful culture is like a city. Uh, there's a lot of different people and a lot of different brine shrimp growing and they all produce poop. And that poop eventually poisons and destroys the entire thing. Right. Now what we're doing is including the spirulina, which continuously consumes the ammonia being released by the artemia as it's growing. So it's actually producing a nice little biological buffer, which okay. is really necessary when we're upgrading these things to a larger scale of production. Right, so it's a, it's a stable environment. You've got brine shrimp growing, you've got them eating the spirulina and the spirulina is then sort of growing and reproducing off of the uh, the waste that the brine shrimp produce. Exactly. All right. That's very cool. All right. So then the ultimate goal here is to have spirulina and brine shrimp growing in the same culture and concentrating that to the point where then you can feed that or transport that to uh, a store or to a hobbyist or to someone growing fish um, so that they can feed their fish a live food that is basically gut loaded because it's living in a, a live culture. That is the effort. All we right. want to get them nutritionally charged and feed them right away. All right, so so the brine shrimp here are nice and healthy. I don't know if you can show um, what course. we got down here. So here's a sample of our uh, bottom culture here. Okay, we'll see if we can zoom in on that and yeah you can see the little critters swimming around in there these are how old uh, these guys are six days now okay six days old so they're swimming around they're eating the uh, the spirulina that's just sort of floating around in that beaker and uh, that's that's a sample that you pulled off and what do we have here so this is harvested concentrated spirulina so these are live cells that we'll be introducing to the culture now, okay. the spirulina are more brackish water algae, so they uh, will be a little shocked when they're first introduced to the brine shrimp culture. But what we found is that they're actually able to adapt and uh, actually grow and thrive in their new environment. Huh. And while they're doing that, they're feeding all of our nice critters. Okay, so what we're trying to do is get a, a certain concentration of algae here so that uh, the brine shrimp can just sort of swim around and grow and feed and uh, not have to go too far to find their, their food source. And that's actually one thing that, uh, that goes wrong with home cultures, right? Is uh, you hatch the baby brine shrimp and you basically need to feed them immediately because they don't have a food source. So this allows you to keep a culture going to get full size brine shrimp growing, reproducing in an environment that is stable and, and is not going to crash. Using this approach, we can uh, produce three different size classes of product. We can produce the Nopliae, the Metanopleus, and then the adults. And then we can guarantee that all three of these stages is nutritionally packed um, as much as the spirulina is. Right, right. And so, so most people, again, if they're hatching baby brine shrimp, they're trying to feed it immediately so that they get the most nutritional value out of it. But with this approach, because they're always basically gut loaded on spirulina, they've always got a good nutritional profile. All right, so we're growing this. 
we're uh, sort of concentrating it, we are collecting it, and then we move over to our good friend, Larry. Hello, Larry. How's it going? Very good. You're always working on something new, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You got to keep moving. All right. So we've concentrated that algae and um, and Brian Shrimp mix. And then how do we get that to a store? What does it look like? How do people uh, go and buy it? So there's going to be a couple of different ways. You know, we're, we're brand new to this. We're going to offer it online, offer it to the hobbyists, offer it to the retailers. And where I see that there's going to be a, a massive uh, advantage to the hobbyists is that they can buy the Napoli, they can buy the Spolina, they can buy the brine shrimp, they can buy a combination of all three. And we'll have these different types. And you know, here you can use the Napoli for the um, for your corals, as well as your fish. Uh, same with the, with the spirulina, maybe the larger ones will go for the fish. So we're basically trying to give a little bit of a smorgasbord yep. of different types of options uh, for hobbyists per their fish or whatever their interests are. Sure, and because it's a live culture, it's going to last a little bit longer, right? So it can be transported to a fish store. Um, you have a couple different setups here, right? So a fish store could uh, have containers which allow people to sort of shop and just sort of pull off exactly yeah. how much they're, uh, they're looking to buy. Exactly, they'll be given a container such as this. They okay. can go over and they can pull just uh, everything from one container they can make their own little smorgasbord of a blend yeah and i think it's going to be a real win-win for everybody yep so they could they could buy uh you know a live spirulina culture they could buy a brine shrimp culture of different sizes um you know the, the green water cultures are uh you know a really interesting really successful um product because like we said it's alive so as long as you've sort of got it with a little bit of light and a little bit of aeration, those brine shrimp are going to continue to survive and eat, um, you know, the, the spirulina in a culture like this. So even if it's sitting on a shelf in a store for a week or two, it's continuing to grow. It's always gut loaded. And uh, whenever you come in to pick it up, it's, it's ready to go. And like you said, if you're selling online too, if someone has uh, fish, you know, fish fry that, that just hatch and you know, all of a sudden they need a live food source. You've right. got those live food sources uh, ready for them. So this is this is a new project that you're working on. Um, it's it's still sort of in the experimental stages, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But uh, this this is something that you're looking to to introduce to sort of the, the northeast market and uh, give people more options for live food and live cultures. And we'll also be uh, targeting some of the frozen fish uh, uh, demands also. Very so, cool. Uh, we'll have a variety of different types of uh, products. Very cool. Well, this is really exciting to see. Obviously, you have the the expertise and the equipment to uh, to be able to offer something like this to hobbyists, um, and it's really exciting to see. I hope that um, you know fish stores take note of of you know little setups like this, um, and and start to offer products like this to hobbyists because it's. It's really one of those things that's difficult to find and uh, is is really in demand. Um, you know, if, if you're the right person that's that's looking to uh, to hatch fish, to feed fish, uh, and to continue to keep live cultures. So, Larry, thank you very much for, for the tour by. and uh, the new uh, the new projects here at AgCore. We'll continue to come back every time you got something new, and uh, we good. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming.